All right, here now is economist Steve Moore. Steve, good to see you. I want to get your take just right off the bat um, on the IMS prediction of uh, a lag in global economy, a stalling in U.S. economy. What's your take? Well, first of all, Sean, I got to tell you, uh, my jaw is just still hanging down from listening to that clip that you played of Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, that, that, what yeah. an indictment of the Democrats. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it was a total takedown. And my only question is, you served in Congress. Why aren't there more Democrats speaking out honestly about the recklessness of the agenda that Joe Biden has put in place? Shame on all these other Democrats who just keep their mouth shut. Now, on the IMF and World Bank, first of all, those are the two two agencies that are almost always wrong when it comes to the economy. So the fact that the IMF and World Bank say that we're headed to recession means nothing to me. But I will tell you this, that when you look at what's going on right now in the United States and around the world, there is no question that we're already in a soft recession in the United States right now. We've been in a recession, Sean, since the beginning of the year. I mean, and, and I call it a cost of living recession where Americans are just losing more and more money every single month that Donna, that uh, that uh, Joe Biden is in, is in the White House. Uh, is this a, a, an incredibly precarious time for the world economy? It absolutely is. And you wonder where the growth is going to come from. And it is all a result of massive over-government spending, not just in the United States, Sean, but around the world. Here's a number for you. $21 trillion. That's how much governments have spent and borrowed over the last three years, $21 trillion. Is there any surprise we're in a uh, kind of economic meltdown now? You know, I, I listened to the clip from Edward Lawrence there asking Kareen Jean-Pierre um, about the economy, and Kareen's like, well, listen, look what we walked into. Yeah, the White House, this administration, walked into a growing economy that is now shrinking. But question for you, you make a good point. Governments are spending so much money, and it becomes addictive. I saw that in Congress, and it becomes really hard to turn off the spigots, especially when you get a downturn. Do you see governments doing the right thing, politicians doing the right thing, and stopping the spending? So the one statement that the, uh, the press secretary made, which is infuriating to me, Sean, as somebody who worked as an economic advisor to Trump, she said, oh, we had businesses shutting down and we had all these problems with the economy. No, no, no. The economy, we were coming out of the recession. The businesses were opening up. The stores were opening yeah. up. People were getting back in. This is a fiction that the, the Biden people in, in the third quarter of 2020, the economy grew by over 30 percent. In the fourth quarter, we had 4 percent growth. Now we've got an economy that's stalled out. It's all a, he did not inherit a bad economy. He, he inherited an economy that was ready to roar. And that's the big, you know, criminal element of this is that now we've got an economy that's stumbling when we should be in a massive expansion. And, and I'll say this. I think if the Trump policies were still in place, Sean, we would be seeing an economic boom, not this runaway inflation. But they, the, the, the Democrats in the White House think that people don't have a memory. They know that it was the economy was growing under Donald Trump. It's like, don't believe your lying eyes is what uh, the, this administration is trying to tell us. But I want to pivot because the Wall Street Journal reporting mm -hmm. that Saudi Arabia defied U.S. warnings ahead of the OPEC plus production cut. And earlier today, Putin praised the decision during uh, talks with the UAE president. What do you make of this? Joe Biden's reaching out to the to. Uh, to, uh, to, to Saudi Arabia, in essence, saying, listen, stall your uh, oil production cuts by one month, Steve. I wonder why he's only asking for a stall of one month for production cuts. Why is that, <laughs> yeah, Steve? Yeah. I, never, I never thought of it in those terms, but I think you're onto something there, Sean. I mean, first of all, think about this, Sean. Do you remember us or anybody in Washington talking about OPEC when Trump was president? Never. No. You know why? Because OPEC didn't matter, because the number one leading uh, you know, oil and gas country in the world was the United States. What we have done under Biden's radical green energy policies is we've ceded control back to OPEC, back to Iran, back to Russia, back to China, all the country, and now Venezuela, for goodness sakes. I mean, these are, these are all communist, tyrannical countries. They have no regard for... What, what about human rights? I thought the left cared about human rights. They don't care what's going on in Russia. They don't care what's going on in Iran with, with, uh, with uh, these, uh, you know, the way they treat women. I mean, it's just so hypocritical and it's so unnecessary. We should be getting our oil and gas from Texas and Oklahoma and North Dakota and Pennsylvania and West Virginia and Alaska, not these countries that hate us. Don't go get oil. Don't go beg people who hate us, Steve. Great point. Uh, and listen, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm fired okay, sure. today. I love it. All Take right. Care.